One of the biggest blemishes on my 2007 speed triple has to be the rusted out exhaust. See, the bike spent time on both American coasts and even some time in Italy by the Mediterranean thanks to its original owner, an Italian doctor. Last year in October, I bought a much nicer set from eBay with the intention of porting the inlets, deleting the pre-cat, and getting it ceramic coated. I only planned to install the exhaust once I got the aftermarket mufflers, and as that became more likely this month, I went after the pre-cat delete but only after some serious confusion about mid pipes and speed triples. Okay, so real quick exposition. There's two types of uh, exhaust setups. There's the 05 to early 07 type that does not have the little chrome shield at the bottom, but also the O2 sensor is on the mid pipe and there's a little extra baffle inside the headers. Then you got the late 07 to 10, which added a little pre-catalytic converter or metal mesh to the mid pipe and moved the O2 sensor up to the header. Now prior to actually sitting down and looking at my eBay exhaust, I thought that all bikes had the former setup. Because it's a well-known mod to remove this baffle from the header and it's a pretty easy job to do you just drill drill four spot welds uh, pull it out with a pry bar and then you just weld a little for the four holes shut but i realized through research that i in fact had the harder late 07 style both in the box and on the bike itself on this one to delete the pre-cat that triumph added a lot of people seem to just cut the pipe open and pull it out whole some people will go back and get a 05 till early 07 uh, set up but you have to get the whole thing. Back in the day there was also an option to get a catless mid pipe from Aero and that's what I went for but after ordering it twice from two different vendors that posted it they either never had it or and they can't get it. <laughs> I pretty much decided screw it I'll just sack up and try to knock out the pre-cat from the inside instead of cutting it open. So this is the cross section of what the catalytic converter looks like. Here's what it looks like after I started the process of beating the absolute crap out of it. As you beat the material, it gets more and more packed and dense, which makes it harder to get through. I used a uh, foot long, half inch uh, bit on a drill, a chisel, a sledgehammer, a nail puller, and a long flathead. You use the drill to put a bunch of random holes around the middle of the material, and then you use the chisel and the hammer to smash like an X or like a plus shaped cut. Straight, like straight down the middle of the, the material. And that allows the cat to be broken into chunks when you're using a flathead, the puller, and the chisel to scrape the outer edges of the pre-cat off the walls of the pipe. This is really hard to effectively film, and if I'm honest, it's so tough that I considered quitting. Most of this is just getting in there with the flathead and a hammer around the edges and then twisting the flathead to pry the material off the walls. So after prying, I like to get in there with the drill to simultaneously destroy material and make more space. But I did eventually get it done. A no cut pre cat delete on a late 07 mid pipe. No easy task. It was so tough that I pretty much decided that I didn't feel like porting and polishing the inlets. On top of the fact that it seems that people are kind of divided on the benefits if you don't also already have a ported and polished head. So I guess I'll just save that for later, I think. I also wanted to get this uh, exhaust ceramic coated by a shop, but I just took the easy and cheap route, which was doing it myself out of a rattle can. I'm just using a clear coat to help protect the pipes from corrosion. Also, yeah, ignore that uh, random toilet. By this point, I had already ordered some twin 14-inch Delkovic mufflers, and a few days that they would take to arrive allowed the ceramic paint on the pipes to dry. Anyway, here's everything that comes with the muffler kit. You get two reducers to adapt them to the mid pipe, a total of four clamps, some sealant, hangers with the rubber thingies, these boomerang shaped objects with the associated hardware, which I didn't end up needing, so I don't know why they came with it. I don't even know what they're for. I thought they would be like for the hangers, but anyway, what I assume to be baffle screws, uh, two sticker packs, good job, Delkovic, and of course, the mufflers. No instructions whatsoever though. Now, here's what makes this a pain in the ass on uh, speed triples. In order to get the headers off, you have to drain the oil because the oil cooler's in the way. Yeah. So that's why this video also <laughs> includes an oil change. I changed the oil like three months ago, but alas, I'm not the type to put oil back in after I take it out. I let the bike idle for a little bit just to get the oil to a bit more of a runny state. Don't get used to the sound. It's going away forever. Now, even though I'm at home, I'm using a Stockton roadside toolkit because I got it for 20 bucks and I won't be too annoyed if a passing crackhead or something steals it. I successfully passed the oil drain challenge by getting none of it on my hands and I let the swamp water flow into the uh, aluminum pan. It's green because it's like multiple racing oil. I like to spray everything with brake cleaner, you know, kind of helps keep the uh, threads clean. Do any of you guys actually replace this washer when you do oil changes? I mean, I've, always, I've owned eight bikes and I've done a number of oil changes, but I don't think I've ever replaced it, uh, besides when I was building a BMW. Anyway, I poured the oil into an empty gallon and I moved on. The first step is to undo the muffler clamps, which also holds these little heat shields. I just get them loose. In order to get the hanger hardware, you gotta remove the main heat shields as well. It's just two little allens on each.
The nut on the other side of the hanger is not captive, so you need another wrench to hold it while you undo the bolt from the front. Pushing the muffler away from the hanger will pull out uh, the bolt if it's you know, being stubborn, if you can't get it out. Now for the mid pipe. I took, I took off this heat shield, but I don't think it's actually necessary. I don't know why I did it. The only thing holding it on there is actually the clamp between its between the mid pipe and the headers. With all of that out of the way, I took the opportunity to clean off the swing arm and the shock. Nothing too crazy though. The header hardware was pretty rusty, so I just hit all of it with WD-40 and I let it soak in while I went after the hanger uh, bolt under the engine. You know, it's another example of having to use a wrench on both sides. When it comes to the oil cooler, you have two bolts on uh, both hard lines for a total of four. Then you have two bolts connecting it to the radiator. Then you have two bolts connecting it to the engine on both sides. There's also two electrical connections to the horn, which uses the same mount as the oil cooler. There's no tools needed, just pull them out. When you reinstall this oil cooler though, be careful tightening the bolts for the lines because those bolts are known to crack the oil cooler if they're done up way too tight. Just put them back evenly and don't tighten them. Don't, don't go too goofy on them, basically. As for the headers themselves, it's nearly impossible to film with the radiator in a way, but it's just a matter of having three different lengths of 13 millimeter sockets. Short, long, and then short with an extension. Basically, each nut requires a different length uh, to reach with, you know, the kind of cramped conditions. Now, some people unbolt the uh, radiator and push it up in a way, but it's not required. It's, it definitely would make it easier, though, I guess. The header hardware probably took me 30 minutes alone, but they do come out. I did goof by leaving the O2 sensor plugged in because I totally forgot about it. It was in there pretty good and since the pipes were now off the bike, I couldn't really get leverage on it. So I had to use heat, the WD-40, which let it come right out. Back when I did the first oil change on the bike, I skipped the oil filter because I didn't have the specific big bowl shaped tool. This time though, the headers were out the way and I was able to use the old uh, impale it with a screwdriver trick. Man, I haven't done this in years. I already had a K&N 204 on the side, and this one comes with an integrated 17mm uh, 6 point, so no special tool required moving forward. You gotta pre-fill it and then install it. Remember boys, and girls, hand tight, and then a little bit beyond that. Alright, back to the headers. Huge difference between the old and the replacement. You want to use new copper washers ideally for the exhaust, but I didn't have any at this time because they seem to be kind of hard to get. Like you have to get them from England OEM because no one seems to like make them aftermarket. So I skipped them for now, but only because I want to do a, cool, a coolant change, you know, come riding season. And that combined with the fact that my, radi my radiator is in pretty ugly shape due to fading and chipping and stuff. So I'll be removing the radiator at some point, either to replace or recondition it. And I'll take the opportunity to replace the header hardware and gaskets when I do that. For now, I'm just reusing it all. As far as installation, it's all the same, just in reverse. Looking better already. I kind of wish this bike was designed without an oil cooler. Kind of messes up the look a little, but I'm not about to delete it if Triumph deems it necessary. So at this point, I actually had to get ready to go to work. I did all this before Revzilla shift. Midpipe at this point, again, is just held on by the clamp to the header. So I stopped there until the next day. But to get a little straight pipe uh, sound clip, because I know you guys want to hear it, <laughs> uh, while I was at it, I just replaced the oil right then and there so I could start the bike. Three liters without a filter change and 3.2 width. The video does not convey just how loud this shit is. The smoke uh, that you see there is just a ceramic baking into the pipes. Anyway, the next day uh, I set up the mufflers themselves. The big end of the reducers go into the mufflers themselves and uh, I use some of the supplied silicone for that connection. The stock mid pipe comes with these like mesh adapters to help, I guess help with sealing. And they slide right out. They, they have to be removed to fit the reducer that came with the Belkovic kit. 
If they don't come out easy, just hit them with WD-40 and then rotate. The mufflers themselves should uh, have the double clamp on them loosely to hold the reducer on and then the smaller clamps should be on the bike on the mid pipe before you put the mufflers on obviously. In this clip you can see that the other muffler is already on. I did it off camera but I would recommend doing the kickstand side muffler first because it helps keep the mid pipe lined up and the weight balance because remember everything is kind of loose and flopping around at this point. It just makes things a little bit easier. When it came to tightening it all I opted to start from the end to work my, work my way in. So basically hangers first which I had to use the original bolts because the kit didn't seem to come with any, then the big hose clamps, then the small ones, then the mid pipe to header clamp. After that, it was all solid. As you can see, I didn't need to use the boomerang thingy, so I don't really know what they were for. <laughs> Let's see how it sounds. All right, I let it warm up and I took it for a ride and rev at the industrial park nearby, you know, just so I don't disturb anybody. This is all baffle in. Unfortunately, these baffles come out through the back, meaning you have to remove the mufflers to remove the baffles. So I'll save that for a dedicated sound comparison video. I think it sounds glorious. You get a real good bark when you chop it quick, very sharp when you chop it to red line, and then holding it at mid RPM, it almost, it almost sounds like a six cylinder car. Then you still get the whine and whistle coming through behind it. There's also a tasteful amount of burbel coming back down instead of like crazy popping. Does it shoot flames? I don't know, I gotta check it out at night. Here's how it sounds in motion though. It sounds good, looks good, doesn't hurt my ears, and I got to keep my Undertale set up. Let me know what you think in the comments. This was episode 3 of the Speed Triple Mods and Maintenance series. You know what? I'm gonna shut up and let the bike play the video out. I'll see you on the next one.